Howdy mates, how are we doing? Here's a part two video. We're getting a little bit closer now to the southern portion of the preserve itself at Tippecanoe 2, but not Tyler 2. Right now we're actually approaching a bit more into some of the scrubby flatwoods and actually entering into a little bit of a hammock as well. Sort of like a transition. But as part of this video, I wanted to point out a peculiar type of tree to always look out for whenever you visit habitats or parks like this. So you may notice we do have some canopy that's in front of me. But you may be wondering, like, what type of tree are all of these? Well, to help clarify, this is actually something called sand live oak. Now, yes, they do sound very similar to, you know, our typical live oak. But there are indeed some differences to look out for. One of them has to do with the habitat itself. So, you know, live oaks, for instance, they can... They're very versatile in terms of what type of habitat they are in. So they can be in hardwood hammocks, uh, rivers, you know, and even drier soil as well. Sands live oaks, on the other hand, they prefer those drier conditions. So they like the soil moisture to be xeric, which is just a fancy way of saying dry. But really though, another way to you know, pinpoint the differences has to do with the height and also the spread of the tree. So like, okay, here we go, for instance. Sands live oak, most times, might only grow up to, say, 50 feet. So, like, in this case, we're kind of seeing that this might only be 30 feet. So, it's not even at its full growth. But something to look for, too, with sands live oaks is they typically like to grow a bit more upright. Whereas a live oak, on the other hand, they like to spread out a bit more. And with that being said, the thickness or the diameter of the branches belonging to a sands live oak are typically much larger. But with the sands live oak, it's a bit smaller. And basically, too, to note, sands live oak is essentially a variety of live oak. So it's like Quercus virginiana variation geminata, something like that. That's like the scientific name, so to speak. But with sands live oaks, they typically like to form in clusters because they do have extensive roots that can easily spread. And that's why, really, for example, you're seeing this little cluster right here. But like live oaks, on the other hand, they typically like to be by themselves just because of their very dense canopy. And usually, another difference to look for is the bark. So here we go. As we approach a little closer, you can see the bark has a bit of a grayish-brown appearance. Much of that has to do with even the lichens that are found on the tree. So, like, we got some shield lichen and... On the other hand, live oak, 
the bark tends to be a bit more of a reddish brown. And as some of you may have noticed before, you know, at parks like, say, the Mayaka River State Park up in Sarasota, where you can see a lot of live oaks, you'll notice that those trees have a lot more resurrection ferns on the branches. But then like this Sands Live Oak behind me, you very seldomly see them. I mean, you might see like little patches here and there, but you won't see it as abundant, you could say. The things that they do have in common, though, is they both like to host the Spanish moss. So then, if we look towards the ground, let me see if I can find a decent example. You also like to look for the leaves as well. Maybe. So if you look at the leaves carefully enough, you can notice that they seem rather slender and they tend to curve a bit more. And they're also narrower, kind of resembling the shape of a canoe. Whereas the leaf of, say, a live oak tends to be much wider in terms of its width. So that is also another way to pinpoint a difference. But yes, another great place to really see sand live oaks can be at places such as uh, the Sleeping Turtles Preserve. I went there last Wednesday, as a matter of fact. That's, uh, I just, I didn't do a video on it. The thought didn't occur to me at the time. And, you know, a lot of the smaller preserves in Charlotte County, you know, that share this very similar type of habitat, you also find them there as well. A uh, great example is the Amberjack Environmental Park. So I'll be sure, mates, to, fo to follow, to share a decent article that really helps you guys to tell even more differences between the both of them because since my video making is not as advanced I can't really provide as many uh, visuals in my videos because yeah like as you can see I'm just only filming with a phone that's it because you know I can't really can't really afford, you know, some of the more expensive cameras for filming and photography purposes. You gotta make the best with what you have. It's alright, you guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something of value in my video. Because, you know, sand live oaks are indeed a native tree. And they do provide shade for us. Especially when it approaches into the hotter months of the year. So, all right, you guys, take care. Enjoy your Wednesday, and journey on a journey is outwards. Take care, folks. See ya.